unexpected repair. Well, expected, knew it was coming. But uh, the, what everybody calls Black Death, it's really just fuel injector leak on the top end. Um, but it looks like black and it looks like death. So that's why it gets called Black Death by so many, including me, accidentally. So um, it's been bad for a while, but now it's started oozing out really badly here. I just knocked a chunk off. Um, so the tone of the engine changed. The regular little clatter uh, became a little throatier, uh, and I felt a little bit of a loss of power, which scares me because I don't really know what's happening there. Uh, overall, I've got the engine pretty good shape. I've been putting off this um, these injector leaks for a while. I've got the copper seals, and I've got the um, the hold down bolts on the stretch bolts. Um, so what I'm going to try to do now is pull the cover off and clean it out the best that I can. Then I'm going to try to heat it up and clean out some more. Then I'm going to um, maybe go after injector three right here. Um, looks like it's maybe the worst, but I'll look underneath first. Um, I'll try to insert here in this video somewhere where it looked what it looked like 20,000 miles ago, 23 to 26,000 miles ago, uh, was already um, pretty covered in carbon. And I said, oh no, and I put the cover back on and kept driving it for another 23,000 plus miles. Um, so we're going to open it up here and do a little reveal once I get the bolts off and uh, see how bad it looks, if it's the same, better or worse. don't think it's better. Yeah. Filming on my phone right now, by the way, because my GoPro is, um, battery's dead. Didn't plan on making a video today, but now I am. Got all seven bolts out. Uh, used a six millimeter Allen key, like one of these for uh, for most of them. But number seven, all the way, all the way in that back corner there, uh, is next to impossible. So I ended up using a. I happen to have a Torx bit. It was uh, that one right there, which is. I don't know, maybe six millimeter. Who knows? But that fit in there, and I could use a ratchet and get back there. On a good angle and get that last bolt so uh hopefully before this point in the video i will have inserted in an edit yes i'm actually editing a little bit now <laughs> as lazy as i am so uh uh hopefully i will have inserted in the video before this point uh what this looked like 23 plus thousand miles ago which looked pretty rough I kept driving because it was strong the engine was strong even though it had other issues um but now uh Oh, it's all. It's definitely sticking. I might have to pry that up a little bit gently. It's got a lot of carbon. The engine's not very hot. It's warm. It was running like 30 minutes ago. It got up to temp. But now yeah, let me work on that separately. Just a minute. All right, I popped it up loose. I haven't lifted it off yet, but I'm already seeing some horrors here. Let's uh, zoom out here and take a look. Yay! Oh, that's pretty clean over there. Let's see if I can lift it out with one hand without making a giant mess. Not very easily. Still a little warm under there. Let me work on that. Oh my! Definitely more than before. Kept filling up in there. Ta da! The cover. So I've got, I'm going to try to chip away at that gently. 
I've got some oven cleaner, a bunch more somewhere, some foil, green scrubbies, a um, little shop vac. Uh, uh, it's going to be quite, quite a lot of fun here. First hose down with oven cleaner and let it soak for a little bit. Very little is chipped off easily. I don't want to go digging too hard. Let this soak for a little while. I'll put a few coats of it in there and um, see if anything softens up. Uh, I want to get some of the real big stuff out of there first and then I'll start the engine trying to warm it up and uh, see if I can get some more out. Been at it for a couple hours. It's definitely a heavy leak out of three, injector three, right here, somewhere in this area. Um, I lost it, but somewhere right, right back in here is where all the uh, the leak and the choot 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 was coming out right here. So, um, and it makes sense because that's where the biggest pile was, right around here. Um, so uh, it may be two. So two and three look like the biggest culprits are in that region. Um, I've been using uh, Easy Off Oven Cleaner, the spray and the aerosol, pressurized can, whatever. And now I'm throwing some acetone in the mix, make it a little more flammable, I guess. And um, <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna run the engine much more. The leak is actually spewing out everywhere, so probably not a good idea. I've got a heat gun over there. I might tinker with that when the acetone is dried out. Um, but I'm just chipping away here. Uh, all this stuff here just kind of... I just keep... I just hopefully I don't knock anything loose and cause a real problem. But you can see here, this is all... Just tons and tons of cards. So I chip as much loose as I can. And then I'll hit it with the shop vac and suck it all out. And then keep chipping away. And maybe a few more hours, I'll be able to see some parts and components in there. Don't know. Right, a few hours in, um, I actually dug down to the bottom in one spot. Um, I actually can find a bolt down there. Um, this is uh, <laughs> this is pretty crazy. Uh, I imagine it's going to take me four or five more hours soaking in um, oven cleaner, acetone, chipping away, vacuuming it out, and repeat, repeat, repeat. Uh, but at least I'm starting to see things. I'm worried about some of these wiring harnesses. I don't want to be clanging away with a screwdriver to chip away and cut through some of the insulation there or mess them up. So a um, little bit nervous about that, but I'm getting all the bulk out of here first. And then I'll try to soak it more, bathe it in acetone, and try to vacuum it out and use a little scrub brush, try to clean out some more. But here's my status after about three hours. It's getting there. More oven cleaner soaking. It works. Softens things right up. Still a slow process. And it's definitely nighttime. <laughs> There's my uh
no workspace all night tonight lights are out I can't find my spotlights uh, soaking again you actually start to see stuff in there see some of the tops of these injectors and uh, it's getting there um, it's about 9.30 at night. Uh, I don't think I'm going to sleep tonight. I've got a, at minimum, I want to try to get Injector 3 out. It's even possible uh, without the right puller. And um, change the seal under it, get it buttoned back up. But I'm going to do as much cleaning as I can until I collapse, I guess, first. And uh, try to get it done. So I've cleaned this up to the point where I don't think too much excess is going to fall into the holes uh, if I pull any injectors out. I've isolated uh, injector number two. Uh, so this guy right here. Um, still a bit messy. Uh, I'd like to clean it up properly soon. Enough, soon. Um, but I just got the, uh, the connector off. This is the one with the, the insulation ripped off of there. I might be able to just fix that without having to replace it all. Um, I pulled the return fuel line off of the first two injectors to get to this one uh, and I took the number two The number two hard line going in there and I stuck aluminum foil on it because I've seen other people do that I'm guessing just not to contaminate the fuel lines um, and uh, I'm gonna go after number two right now um, I need to do some cleaning out a little bit more, but I got myself a 13 millimeter uh, deep socket here 
And I'm going to try going on there and just seeing if it's movable at all. Probably not going to be. Um, so I'm going to take this and put like a, just a 3 8 inch extension on there and try to just wiggle it back and forth if it moves at all. If not, I'm going to try, um, I'm going to drop some PB Blaster down in there, let it soak for a couple hours and do some more, some more of that. And then I can heat it up with a heat gun, which is not going to do much at all, I don't think. Um, I'm reluctant to run the engine um, just because it, it leaks so badly, it's going to spew uh, spew fuel all over the place, burnt fuel. So um, let me experiment a little bit and see how far I get uh, without having to start the engine. If I need to start the engine, I can. Maybe I'll put something just to protect the things up here to catch it somehow. Um, but we'll experiment a little and see if I get any motion at all out of it. Not too not too um, expectant of that happening though. Clean it up a little bit more down in there. Look at the number two injector. Uh, cleaned around um, cleaned around this a little bit better here so I can get the socket over it. And then working on the hold down bolt. It came out pretty easily. I'm just working it out right now. I've got a, um, I think it's a T45 Torx bit um, on a 3 8 inch socket wrench with a small extension right here. Um, the uh, plastic cap was kind of hard to get off by the way um, I ate it up a little bit but it's kind of intact with the exception of that it happened when I was chipping away at the uh, carbon everywhere um, when I clean up the fuel injector when I get it out maybe it'll look nicer but I'd like to change these out I found them I sourced them for about 20 bucks somewhere a piece and I found all five together for uh, like five dollars so I don't know if I'd go with them but maybe I'll find the the OEM uh, Mercedes ones are 1995. I think it was ID parts. I gotta check that. Um, but I might just get all new ones when I redo this and a new return fuel line. That one's pretty gunked up. Um, and eventually all new injectors, I think, unless these clean up really well or I can get them uh, redone for me. Uh, need to look into that some more. But working on this right now, taking out this uh, hold down bolt and then I'm gonna vacuum it in case anything fell down in there. Um, and then uh, maybe even plug it with something so I don't get too much gunk in there. Um, we'll see. Back at it a few days later, uh, trying a couple tricks, getting a little cleaner down there. Um, Still can't get those feet out that the, um, the little claw foot bracket, hold down bracket, uh, completely won't move, won't budge. Um, but I'm cleaning better now using acetone and uh, automatic transmission fluid. And I've also got yeah, some, um, I've also got some um, pick tools here from Harbor Freight. These are the professional ones for $29.99 for the set. And these are the uh, small ones for $1.99 for the set. Um, small ones are doing better than the big ones and I actually bent the uh, big one here I bent trying to get it out so maybe not as professional as um, <laughs> as they say they are so I'm going to soak it a little bit more and maybe the uh, that combo of fluids are going to get down in there and clean well but um, they are cleaning well I just don't know how well they're loosening up the gunk that's still down in there they, feel like it's scraped all the way but I keep looking back and it still shows there's some black crud in there um, so it's getting closer but not close enough acetone AT, well ATF plus four I've got for power steering fluid but I think it's doing the job um, <laughs> there's some some boulders there that came out early. Um, so I've done another soaking here. I'm gonna let it pull up down in there, I guess. Let's see if it'll loosen up and maybe, I don't know if it's gonna penetrate at all, but maybe it'll just loosen the top layer and it can chip some more away. I'm trying to get that bracket out still for injector number two.
no luck. Well, okay, so I got the um, the bracket out. Uh, it just took a lot of uh, chemicals and a lot of uh, patience and twisting and turning and pushing and tweaking. Um, so that's out. Uh, the injector's not moving at all. Um, I had everything disconnected here. Um, I put the uh, 13 millimeter deep socket on there um, with an extension and tried to use it just to, to leverage it around. No luck, not budging at all. Um, PV blaster stuff has been in there and now there are all kinds of other chemicals. I don't know what's going on. So I might try the, the so-called rocket method, which is supposed to be kind of dangerous. Um, but uh, I'm, the problem is when the engine's running, it, this injector is leaking so bad, so badly that it just it spews crap all over the place inside the engine. So um, I don't know if I should uh, just put the cover on loosely to protect it. Maybe maybe I'll do that. I'll just lay the cover on top um, and run it for a few. Uh, and just see if see if it loosens up, see if it heats up, see if it pops out. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I'll just be sitting there listening with a key, hoping nothing too horrible happens. Um, this um, this fuel line here uh, will likely, if it does work, it'll pop up and bend this fuel line and maybe rip out this uh, return line. I, I have no idea. <laughs> kind of wondering. Uh, I also ordered some of these connectors and harnesses because this one has the, um, you can see that there, this one's got a, a problem with the insulation there. Um, let's just see if it starts. I've got it much cleaner than it was. My focus is on injector number two right here. Um, that's the one that's leaking, I believe. Uh, we'll find out if that's the case. Um, but it did very much look like it was not three. The front side of three, but the back side of two, it was kind of coming out like right in here and shooting straight up and filling up the engine compartment. So uh, let's see if it'll at least start. I might just try to start it and shut it off just to see if it will start. Um, I don't know. We shall see. And I, I lost three of my spotlights out here. So I'm um, in the dark now, which is kind of annoying. Try to start it and see what happens. All right, so I got it started. I've got a GoPro here trying to capture or something, but I realized that it's just going sending all the fuel out um, of injector two. So uh, I'm gonna try to uh, just loosely lay this on top here. And see, I, I don't know if that injector is going to rock it out of there so hard it's going to crack this or whatever. Um, I don't know. Let me start and run it for a few minutes. Try to record something cool, but the cover is not going to be as cool. I, I don't know. Let's see. So I'm running it now. Got all that vapor coming out. I'm uh, closed in here. I don't know. I don't know what to do. At least internal circulation. There's no uh, there's no claw there. No bracket holding it down. Okay, there's less vapor coming out now, which is interesting. No, it's still there. Just the breeze blew it the other way. Um, I don't know if I should rev the engine a little bit. already coming out anyway just getting packed into that crunchy carbon mess underneath the cover there I'm wondering if my windshield wiper is gonna have carbon deposits all over them now and I was told when you pull that out you just drive it for a while I'm kind of scared to do that but what do I do tow it back when it pops out
um, the idle was getting a little rough and then the day I pulled it off the road I um, the day I pulled it off the road I noticed there's a different tone in the, the ticking noise so um, I looked at it sure enough there's a whole bunch more of that uh, that injector leak crud around the cover open it up and Sure enough, it was that giant mess that you hopefully saw in the beginning of this video if I put this together properly. I'm going to go back up to 2,000 RPM. Interestingly, I've got less smoke when it's warmer. I think. Unless there's a breeze blowing out there. About a little more than six minutes in now. I 
have no idea what other kind of damage this could do to the engine if the thing pops out. It's got me a little concerned. vibration now, seven minutes in. It's a little concerning. Attempts about the halfway point between the 110 and 180 mark. That so means halfway warmed up, whatever. It's usually pinned at 180 running temperature. Extra vibration went away. I think. Very little, uh, very little leaking going on or vaporizing the air anyway. I don't know, maybe it's hotter and it's less visible. Coming up on eight minutes in. 2,000 RPM. Hope I charged the GoPro battery. I think so. Get a little, a little more risky with uh, RPMs here. RPM about. Temperature needles moving a little bit. I got some more vapor coming out. About 2500 RPM. Needles moving a little bit, just above the halfway point now. There we go. Mm, I can really smell it now. Uh, nine and a half minutes in. RPM or higher, we're just about up to temp, sitting still on a um, 65 degree ambient temperature Fahrenheit.
seven and a half minutes in, and we're just about there at normal operating temperature. Back down around 2,000 RPM. I'm gonna jump up to 2,500 again for a few.
higher. I don't know if that puts more load or pressure in there or what, but I'm almost, well, about 2800 RPM. 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Hmm. Quarter tank of gas. And lots of lights. Actually, not too many. Stays there? Oh, barely idles. That's okay. Did you hear that? Huh. Turn it off. All right. Oh, I'm gonna turn the lights off there. Let's go look around the front. I'll keep you on the camera here. And nothing really remarkable here. I'm gonna turn the GoPro off. Still recording. Oh, GoPro's warm. So it does a safe spot for it. And uh, let's see, is this going to be hot to touch? Ooh, not hot, but it's definitely warm. I'm kind of afraid here. I don't want to burn myself. Some oven mitts or something. It's not that bad, it's just a little bit warm. Look at the inside of that. Dang, it's sticky. It's got some fresh stuff in there. Mm. I and mean, all this here needs to be cleaned out still from earlier. It's just got like a thin sheen of uh, spray on there. So I don't have time for that. Um, I'm going to try to pull off those lines and uh, see if it can move. All right, I've got a chance here. It's moving. I'm work on it for a little while. I got it nice and loose now, but I can't quite lift it out. Actually, it's moving upward, but the claw won't fit in there properly. I, if I got the wrong one, but I can't, can't quite get in there. Let me keep working. And I got it out. Didn't really need the claw, but it's too hot to touch, so I reached down there and pulled it out. Uh, the claw doesn't actually fit in there, uh, not at, least, at least not on number two. Um, because uh, there's just not a room there, but if I, after I wiggle it and lift it out a little bit, um, then it fits in there. But I can't imagine that claw is needed after you can wiggle it out on your own. It looks like the seal is not on there. So I'm going to try to look down in there. I need some light. Hang on. There's a little light. Can't see anything in there. Let me get another light. Alright, continuing here. A little extra light. I don't know if I can see it in there. I can't see anything down there. Let me get a photo. Whew, that's a relief. <clears throat> Got the injector out. Uh, tried to clean the seat and get the seal out. The seal is still stuck down in there. I don't know if you can see that. A little bit, I guess. Um, it started raining. Got to pull all my tools from underneath the canopy here and off the edge. And... Um, We'll now uh, go to bed. I'm going to leave this here, uh, drying out a little bit. I uh, vacuumed out all the excess chemicals and water and cleaner and all that stuff. The carb cleaner, by the way, has actually done a pretty good job of breaking stuff down. It's got a little propellant force to it, too, so that helps. So, probably do the wine cork trick. Um, 
shove it down in there and try to scratch away and clean out a lot more of this from around injector number two. Again, I just want to get number two sealed and then see if I have any more leaks after that. Uh, that's really the culprit, I hope. Um, and uh, signing off for the night and getting back on it tomorrow night. I only have tonight and tomorrow night to get it done. Good night. Oh, not good. Try this. So I just found this long socket that just fit this uh, 5 8 inch dowel. Tapped it on there nice and tight. Put a fresh little scrubby on the end there. Put it in there. But I don't have a uh, thread adapter here to get on my cordless drill. But let me run over and grab something at O'Reilly's or somewhere and um, should be able to put a good good amount of movement on that. I mean, I need a little bit by hand, but I want to really, really work it on there. Hmm. There's the super green scrubby tool. Got a big old uh, socket on here. What size is it? I don't even know. 15 millimeter socket over the 5 8 inch dowel. Tapped it down there. Um, countersunk a little uh, Phillips head screw into this thing. Put the green scrubby on the end. I'll show you what the little countersink looks like here in a few, I think. Um, and it fits nicely. Right down in there. Already picking up goop. Squeaky. I'm gonna get it on a some kind of a mechanized driver and really turn that a while. Make it shiny in there. It's squeaking, but I'm pretty certain it's not squeaky clean. I don't know how much of a view you can get in here without a light. That's not too bad. Hey, look at there. Not bad at all. Huh. All right, I'll keep working on it. Just by hand. Not sure if I'm gonna find all these videos to stitch them together. I'm doing them from my phone right now, but we've got, um, I mean, it's not super clean in there, but it's better than it was. And I've got a pretty clean path down there for the injector. I've got most of the gunk cleaned out of this bolt hole there. Uh, it's injector number two is the one that's leaking. Here's the injector all cleaned up the best I could get it. Um, looks actually, I mean, it was functioning fine. It just was leaking all over the place, so. Um, Got a little foot claw thing there, it's cleaned off mostly. And I've got a new seal here, and I've got a Permatex um, 81343NEC lubricant, good to 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it's not the ceramic stuff Mercedes recommends, but apparently, from all I read, Mercedes doesn't even use that themselves, so from the factory at least. Um, <clears throat> I've, got a, I've got a little scope video, hopefully I can get it in uh, before this one. I don't know, maybe I'll narrate this video or something on the side. Uh, so I'm gonna cover this with the lube. No, I'm not covering, I'm not gonna cover the tip. I'm just gonna put a little bit on the edge there so the seal sticks on it. Uh, and from what I understand, one side of this is a little flatter and then the other side. I don't know if you can see that, but this looks like the, there's the flat side that goes against the injector. 
There's the round side that points down toward the hole that it sits in. Um, not sure if I'm going to bother with making a video of that because I don't have enough hands. Um, I'm going to try it. I'm going to set it down in there, put it all back together, and see if it starts up and see if I've got any other leaks anywhere else. Um, that's my task right now. All right, number two ejector and the hold down claw thing, bracket, is uh, eased down in there. It feels like it settled down in there nice. Now I've got um, one of the hold down bolts, a uh, fresh new one. I say it's a um, stretch bolt, so you can only use them one time. I think that's important. I'm going to see if it threads down in there nicely and see how far I get, and then I'll look up the torque spec again to make sure and get it cranked down in there. Trying it out now. Well, she's all back together. Um, of course, there's the the conductor there is hanging loose. I need to fix that. Um, I left the seals on the uh, the exit there uh, for now. Just they snap back in nicely. I just want to kind of change as little as possible um, and try to get this thing started. I'm gonna try to start it. I think I might have to crank it for a minute if the fuel's not hanging out right there. Um, I don't know. I think I got everything back together. Try to start it up and see what happens. I think my battery's still good. I'm going to try to start it. I'm a little worried. Oh, there we go. Well, it makes me feel good that it started. It's a bunch of... Ah, look at that! No fuel is spitting out everywhere. Injector one. Injector two. Injector three. Four. Five is back in that mess somewhere. Right. Huh. Let it run for a few minutes. We got a big old mess to clean up out here. A little noise. I'm gonna run it without that cover. That cover right there, I gotta clean it up still a lot on the inside. It's, it's pretty, pretty nasty here. We'll work on that another day. I'm just glad I'm not shooting uh, burnt diesel fuel all over the place. All right, I'm gonna let it warm up a little bit. That's a relief. Woohoo!